Math point 18, exponential or linear growth and decay. In the digital SAT, exponential growth is a topic, a kind of question that appears pretty often and you will see usually one or two questions on exponential growth or decay. It's usually exponential growth. Exponential growth means a graph that looks like this. This is different from a line, which is straight. And it's different from a, a parabola, which looks like this. An exponential decay is a graph that looks kind of like this, but flipped over the y-axis. So like mirror image over the y-axis, it'll look like this. An exponential graph in math form looks like f of t equals a b to the tth power. In this equation, f of t is the final value or the, the value at a the value when time is t. t is the time. So in the digital SAT, you would see time as being the number of years pretty often. So if it says in the third year, then or after three years, then t would be three. a is the initial value and b is the the rate of growth or decay so if you look at this formula here then f of t equal or this equation here f of t equals 2 times 0 0.97 to the tth power then f of t the value this the value of this expression t is the time initial value is 2 initial value means where it's what the value is when the exponential growth started so when it started t here is 0 so b to the 0 is just 1 so f of t equals a that's when time is 0 at the original time here when t is 0 then this becomes 1 this becomes 1 so 2 times 1 equals 2 and B is the rate of growth. This number here is the rate of growth. When you have the value B is greater than one, that means it's an exponential growth function. It grows, it goes up. When you have B is less than one, but greater than zero, B between zero and one, then you have an exponential decay that looks like this going down. Here there are six different equations. The question is find the exponential growth functions in these six. When you have an exponential growth function, there are a few things. First, the formula needs to look like this. And next is that the value for b has to be a growth function, so b has to be greater than one. So among these, then you have this one, with b being greater than 1, being an exponential growth function, and so is this one being greater than 1. But this and this are less than 1, so these are exponential decay function. This one and this one, they're decay function. Let's look at a few practice questions. And on the digital SAT, it's you see the most often kind of question would be to identify what the function or the a or the b or the t is it, uh, given a scenario here the average concentration of a chemical that remained in a sample of shellfish during an experiment was measured at the beginning of four consecutive months so here is a a uh, plot which of the following best models these data? 
and it asks you whether it's linear or an exponential first. It's linear, linear, exponential, exponential. And linear, remember I said earlier, is a straight line, whereas exponential growth, the numbers get like bigger and bigger, quicker and quicker. So if you look at the points, at month one, there are 5.4. Uh, the concentration is 5.4 parts per million. At the second month, it's 1.8 parts per million. So the value is getting smaller and smaller from one to two, and then to three and to four. So it means it's going down. So this can't be increasing as time increases. This can't be increasing as time increases. It has to be decreasing. So you know that A and C are wrong based on the first two values. And then next, if you look at how what the change is from a point to another, this from from here to here is like three point something, like three, four ish. But from here to here is like less than one. It's like one point two from here to here. And then from here to here, the change is zero point four. So you see how the change gets smaller and smaller. And that means it's an exponential model, but it's getting less and less. So it's kind of like this exponential decay. So it's an exponential model and the average concentration is getting less and less as time increases. So it's this one. And we can see that graphically here. If we want to plot the points, we have 1 comma 5.4. We have 2 comma 1.8. We have 3 comma 0 0.6. And we have 4 comma 0 0.2. And this kind of like kind of models the exponential decay graph here. It's like that, but it's not a straight line, so it's not a linear um, decrease. It's an exponential decay. Before its launch, the first stage of the Saturn V rocket held about this many gallons of fuel. The number of gallons of fuel f of t remaining t minutes after its launch can be modeled by a by the function this one where t is less than or equal to 6, which of the following describe the meaning of the fraction this in the context described. So it's asking for what this means in the function. And before we learn that that number is b, and b is the rate of growth or decay. So that is this. So it's uh, this number shows how fast or slow uh, the this function this uh, what is f the number of gallons of fuel remaining in the tank so this is showing how much of the the fraction of the gallon so how much of this original uh, the the gallon of fuel in the tank had at its launch at its launch means time equals zero so time equals zero this uh, Exponent is zero, so the this term here will be one. It's anything to zero is one, and we end up with f of t equals fifty five hundred and forty thousand. So that's not it because the fraction, the amount of gallon at its launch is this. So if the question asks what does this number mean, then choice A is right. But it's asking for this nine over twenty one. The fraction of so how much of this gallon of fuel remaining in the rocket uh, after a certain number of time and this number here if this number at the top the exponent is just the number t by itself then this exponent which is t minutes meaning that if t is one t is one then that's one minute equals one minute and t is two that means two minutes and so on and so forth but here we have t equals the exponent being 20 t and just to make things simpler without going into too much math behind it if this number here the exponent has a number a coefficient next to the variable t then what you can do is divide the unit which is minutes by the number 20. So this means 1 minute equals 20 t. You can think of it that way. Mm -hmm. So t 
is divide this by 20, we get 1 over 20 minutes equals t, which another way to write um, 1 over 20 minutes is if you convert minute to seconds. So we have 1 over, um, or basically dividing 1 minute by 20 t. It's what you, what you can do. So 1 minute, we know that 1 minute is 60 seconds equals 1 minute. So another way to write this expression here is to divide this by 20, and we have the second as the unit, so we have 3 second equals t. And that's how fast this is changing based, uh, per 3 second. So the fraction of 540 gallons of fuel in the rocket 3 seconds after its launch. That's when the so this 3 second is how how fast what what the the rate of change is for the time. And if this number here is just 1 without the 20, then it's the fraction of the gallons of fuel in the rocket t seconds after its launch. But because there's 20 t, then we find the, the, the converted unit by changing, dividing the, the unit, which is t minutes, um, one minute, by 20. So 60 divided by 60 seconds divided by 20 equals 3 seconds. So it's every 3 seconds, then the number of fuel in the tank decreased by this much. And then after another 3 seconds, it decreased by uh, a fraction by uh, 19 over 21 of this much. Let's do one more. The function above, so there's a function. I mean, you can recognize these kind of question on the SAT if you see a function with an exponent, and the exponent has the variable, and the question asks which of the following best is, in, um, is the meaning of the number in the context. So this number is this number, that's the a, and a is the initial value. So it's the original value of, of the function. The estimated number of farms in million in 1940, and n is the number of years after 1940. So in 1940, that's the initial, the original year, and A is the original year at the very beginning, 1940. B is the number of years, n years after 1940. So basically after three years. After three years, the number of farms will be this times this. Uh, so the estimated number of farms in total in years after 1940, that would be f of n. If the question asks which the following best describes f of n in the context, then b is right. The estimate decrease in the number of farms each year estimated decrease. That's how fast things are changing and that's the B here, the rate of growth or decay. Here it's decreasing so it's um, less than 1. That's why it decreased, but it's the amount of change. So this would be right if the question asked for nine, zero, what does 0 0.98 represent. The estimated percent by which the number of farm decrease from each year to the next after and percent would be um, one minus this. So if the question asks for what does 0 0.02 or 2% mean in the context, then D would be right. But on the digital SAT, I haven't seen a question that asks for estimated percent change. It's always the estimated decrease or increase. So don't worry about D, about this wording for estimated, de estimated percent uh, oh, this percent, not percent change. So this would be right if estimated percent by which the number of farms, yeah, per percent decreased. Percent decreased. So decreased by 2% every year. 
but don't worry about this one. And here we have uh, this one being a straight line, so this is linear decrease. This is decreasing, but decreasing like less and less, less and less. It kind of like uh, dragged on, so this would be a exponential decay. This is linear increase, and this is exponential increase. Here we have this graph, and just by looking at this or this function, we have this being greater than one. That means it's exponential growth exponential because the exponent here is x that's the variable here and as for which the following could represent the graph in the xy plane so it's an exponential exponential growth being bigger than one so putting that together then it will be this All right, and just to go over the different kind of graphs, this is going up constantly, so this is a linear growth. This is the exponential growth that we are talking about earlier. And what this graph means is, it in the very beginning, it's slow, but it gets bigger and bigger. It's kind of like x, if I draw a line here, it's kind of like exponential growth up to this point here. But then after this point, it's it kind of like decreases or stops increasing mm -hmm. as fast as it was in the beginning. So it it's getting slower and slower here. Mm. And for this, this may look, uh, you may have seen this in your math class, the solid point means it's uh, at x equals 0, it's here. And then let's say if this is 1. At x equals 1, then it's not the white circle, but it's the solid circle here. So it's in math, it's called the step function. So if the question asks, from like 0 to 1, it's this value, but then not including 1. But then from 1 to 2, it's this value. From 2 to 3, it's this value. Then this graph would be the right one. And what's next to do for this question is to understand what the question asks for. Think about the situation. Is this getting bigger and bigger every year? Or is it increasing, getting bigger and bigger every year, but increasing at the same rate? Then it's A bigger and bigger and the change is getting also bigger and bigger than at C. If it's getting bigger and bigger in the beginning, but the change is getting, it's still increasing, but the change is getting smaller and smaller than it's B. And if it's the same for the whole year, then, and then after a period of time, it increases, and then it's the same for the next period, then the answer is D. Uh, and I'll leave it to you to understand what the question means in context. So it's kind of like a reading comprehension question a little, and then try to see if you know the answer to this question. And for the other ones, I'll leave it up to you too to try to do them. But if you have any questions, as always, then just ask. Also, go ahead and do these classwork and homework questions, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Bye.